Okay, thank you. Um, so I suppose you can see my screen. Right, and you hear me well. So, okay, let's start since we are really late. Um, so, yeah, so this tutorial is supposed to give you some kind of um, um, theoretical understanding of uh, LLMs. Um, you already worked with LLMs, so I suppose you already done some reading about this. Um, but the whole thing, the whole point, the whole out, like what you need to get out of this is like the components that you need to like um, really get some basic understanding of and because they are going to be useful when you are um, fine tuning, when you're doing this, uh, this fine tuning. So you need to know what you're working with, just uh, like what are exactly are you trying to, to do. Um, okay, so, but yeah, so it's not going to talk about like the, the actual um, um, task that you have to do. This is just about LLMs, the base model basically. Okay, um, so this is the agenda. We'll talk about like the overview of LLMs, the transformer architecture, um, uh, data preparation uh, for LLMs or the data input. Uh, we have the training and uh, the specifically like the about the fine tuning, um, uh, like uh, parameter. There are these two other variant of fine fine tuning. Um, Okay, so um, just uh, um, right away, uh, well, LLMs, this is just uh, a definition, or you already all know this. LLMs are these powerful um, language models. Um, uh, they are like language models, these are the uh, what language models are the models that are, um, uh, are probabilistic models for natural languages. These are language models, large language models, these are like have a bigger scale and they uh, achieve um, general purpose language understanding. Um, they're also called, LLMs are also called foundation models because, uh, because um, just th their scale and their, um, the benchmark they can achieve now means that they are, can be of general purpose. So it's not one thing they can do. They can do multiple things. Um, you can use them for, for many things, uh, basically. So, um, like, we have chatbot, code generation, all of translation, all of these kind of uh, natural language processing um, tasks. Uh, of course, LLMs acquire these abilities in uh, by uh, learning. Uh, um, from a large amount of text uh, documents. Um, I would, uh, that, uh, the data is a, 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 a very big um, uh, uh, the training data is a, a very is a, a big scale. All text and um, they go through uh, an intensive process of uh, self-supervised and semi-supervised uh, semi training processes. Um, so like uh, in a brief history, uh, one second. Right, um, okay. So we see that like the whole thing is that LLMs are based on transformer architecture. And this architecture basically was introduced by a paper from Google researchers in 2017. Um, well, and as you say, like it's a, the name of the paper is attention is all you need because transformers are based on attention mechanism. This we'll talk about this a little bit later, but. Um, uh, so this is 2017, and then we have like, if you look at this uh, timeline, um, and this explosion just happened lately. After the paper, there was this birth, birth model, and then uh, from 2022, I meant 2020. Um, 
it's uh, then we had the uh, GPT-3 and uh, like uh, later like uh, chat GPT and all of this explosion after chat GB, uh, GBT3 um, in 2020 uh, it became possible to do prompt engineering which means before before 20, 2020 um, la uh, language models needed to use them for a particular task say for to be chat or to use them like to answer uh, question answering or to do translation or whatever specific tasks we want to do we needed to fine tune the models which is the task you're going to do this week but uh, the task you did before the prompt engineering one was not possible um now, or after uh, GBT3, it became like a post basic, basically prompt engineering is that you just like um, in one shot or a few shots. This is a very small, if you think about it, this is a training set. It's a very, very small. You're giving it to the model and then it's, it's, uh, it's, um, um, it's capable of, of, uh, uh, of like achieving a very good uh, <clears throat> performance doing uh, doing that uh, so uh, okay this is just like a, a brief introduction so we come to the Um, can you hear me? Um, some, okay, it's weird. Um, right. so, uh, I'm very sorry, but, um, uh, hopefully, I don't know why I see, like, uh, all right. Um, yeah, so we just had a power cut, so um, there might be some issues yes. with um, network. Can you confirm that you hear me still? Yes, uh, thank you. All right. Straight my Wi-Fi. Okay. Um, is it like, come on. Okay, one second, sorry.
Of course. Um, okay, sorry. Uh, can you hear me? Um, I'm sorry, I asked this a lot. Uh, maybe. Okay, uh, so see, like my network is really slow. So, um, so I'm not, <laughs> not able to open the presentation.
Hello. Yeah. Um, I'm back. Hopefully, it's going to work. I apologize, even though, like, um, yeah, I apologize a lot. So, uh, doesn't count anymore. Yeah. So, um, I was talking about uh, the transformer struct architecture. Let me check if wait, wait, before I jump in. I'm I'm audible, right? you can see my screen no i'm not presenting though of course not sorry i was about to just start yeah i apologize deeply i got a power cut so internet was not working i had to try multiple um network options before and this is like my mistake for not preparing earlier um sorry uh so yeah so you can see my screen right Yes. All right. So yeah, uh, I was talking about architecture, the transform architecture, the one that is like the basic, the base of LLM. So of course, it's a deep learning architecture, uh, architecture um, neural network, basically, that is based on um, attention mechanism. The transformer architecture came like uh, as a like a replacement let's say it's replaced uh, in its usage the uh, recurrent neural networks uh which uh, like were used for um, language proce uh, processing uh before uh of course um they can still be used but the thing is that transformers are much better uh, uh, uh recurrent neural network um are but where they were used for language processing because they're capable of, of handling sequential um, data, basically. So you can like handle a, um, a language processing, which because like uh, everything depends on if you're trying to understand uh, uh, words or like a language, you, you need to understand um, a text that is composed of uh, words uh, of like units. The units, if the units are words, you have to be able to understand like a um, sequence of them in sentences and in a, a larger text. So, and the meaning of a word or the meaning of the of the whole depends on like how these word these units are uh, organized and used together. So, it's a sequence and uh, RNNs were used to like handle this, but. Uh, uh, the whole thing is that uh, basically um, the neural networks, uh, uh, like the nodes, will be able to handle um, basically remember the input they had, like the the, is the first word, and then the second, uh, the third, and fourth. It had to remember like uh, all the previous words that it passed through. I'm talking about words, but of course. Um, Later on, we'll talk about tokenization. It doesn't, but okay. But mainly, they are words. Um, but uh, this was computationally um, like not easy. Uh, it was uh, complex, and it had issues that like uh, uh, with uh, vanishing a gradient and stuff when it was trained, and all of this was solved or kind of sidestepped by the attention mechanism. So the attention mechanism basically is, um, so this was like about the new uh, RNNs, but the attention mechanism is what allows the model to um, focus on uh, like uh, multi different parts of the input. So that if you have a sentence coming into your model, um, the attention is what you can like. It, it's it's called attention because it is it's like likened to a uh, like cognitive attention in in, in human brains, and um, so basically it's it's a mechanism of like uh, uh, allowing the model to focus on different parts of the of the input sequence, and uh, so it basically computes a representation of the input sequence, and. Um, and relate different parts of it, okay? Um, 
there are different approaches to calculate this attention. Um, there is like self attention and cross attention. This basically will see that when you're using um, encoder and decoder, this part, these are the components of, of a transformer. Uh, a self attention is when uh, it's within one block, and uh, cross attention is when you are like um, using multiple blocks, basically, um, an encoder and decoder. Uh, Okay, so yeah, so um, uh, right. So the next next is like we'll talk about these components, the encoder and decoder. Um, the 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 original. Um, I think the, in the original paper, the, the structure was an encoder and decoder, but then um, models were constructed with, with one or the other. Uh, OK, so just to talk about this encoder, so this was the block. So it's the block where like, you have the source, the input of the data. Um, uh, we didn't talk about the embedding, but OK, the data like is text, and then the text is tokenized. And then tokenized meaning is that it is um, uh, broken down to units, which is like usually one word or less than one word, basically. Um, and then each one, each unit is embedded, meaning it's transformed to a vector. Vector is just a sequence of numbers. And this is a representation of the word, the representation of the word in like the, um, the embedding space, which represent basically supposed to represent the relationship between uh, between words in the semantic uh, the semantic re re relation. Um, I I'm explaining embedding, even though like it, it has it came later in the in the in the presentation. I should have put it before, but anyway, let's uh, just. Accept this. It's an embedding. It's a numerical representation of the of my text. There is a positional encoding, which is um, if you broke down your sequence of, uh, let's say, it's a sentence. You broke down the sequence into units, and you embedded them. Uh, you have to remember the position of 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 e of these words to like with respect to each other. This is what position and encoding does. And then um, gets into the encoder. So in the definition of the encoder, it's like, a, um, it's basically, a, it's allowed to generate contextualized token representation. Uh, it's like a representation of each mixed with the information of input token. So basically it's kind of, um, Okay, so as I said, if the source, the input is just like a sequence, it's a sentence, any sentence, let's say, this is a tutorial, this is like a forward sentence. Then in the, in the organization is they broken down, let's say they're broken down into four. So each word is, is, is a unit and each word is embedded into a vector, um, a numerical vector, uh, sorry. Um, positional encoding uh, encodes the like re the positional relationship between the, these vectors, and then uh, the encoder basically um, uh, uh, contextualizes like the, this input together, like uh, the relationship between the representation between a token and it's like the imp other input tokens. The difference between the, the um, sorry between the encoder and the decoder is that like uh, the decoder also includes um, um, so the, during the training uh, uh, say in the during the uh, self supervised training where the model is trying to re, uh, to um, to generate the next uh, the next word of the sentence of the like 
the next word. Then uh, the model is uh, at each step is generating next word. This out this is the output. The decoder also includes basically the output with the input um, when it creates this contextualization. So sorry, this is the difference between like encoder and decoder. This is just like an um, a top. Uh, top, like uh, I'm just saying that it's words, like it's uh, in detail technically. Um, this is not precise actually. Uh, so the encoder consists of two major components the self attention mechanism and a feed forward neural network. Um, of course, this, both these components are neural networks. Um, they are layer, layers of. Uh, uh, um, it's a deep deep learning network. Uh, okay, uh, so as I said, like the position encoding, it's like it's a vector representation. It encapsulates that encapsulates the relative positions of tokens in the target sequence. Um, okay, so these are just like uh, with the uh, with the decoder. Um, as I said, like there's a chorus attention. Uh, if it's like it's in incorporating the output of the encoder, if there is an encoder, and the self attention or mixing information among input and output. Um, so, but um, as I said, like uh, here, like this model has an encoder and decoder, but then the models that are composed only of, of encoders or decoders, like uh, uh, I think, uh, um, um, well, actually, I don't remember which was which. Uh, one of them was BERT and one that was GPT. Um, but um, okay, I'm sorry, I don't I don't remember which was which, but okay. So just going back to like the data preparation where like this input that is going to into this transformer architecture, as I said, the data colonization, which is the, the process of breaking down a text into smaller units called tokens. Um, uh, so, okay, so as I said, like this is, that is a start, GPT is amazing. Then uh, like if you break it down, this is one tokenization. Um, you can see organizations of open AI, for example, if you like, uh, there is this, uh, um, AI, neither has to see it. I think this is it. And then you can, um, okay, I'm going to take forever, but okay. So you can enter here. Like uh, it will show you how this. Um, okay, the works are it's like take forever to load. Right, so so this is an example, and then you see here how it is broken down. So basically, it's broken down in words, but like um, some words might be broken down. Like uh, let me see. Um, in theoretical uh, physics, super, super symmetry. Uh, so this is a, like a, a word that is is specific to um, the particular field. So it's not a common word. Uh, well, not common word, but I mean, it's not going to be common in the like the base. The data set uh, training data set uh, this is domain specific and you can see that it's broken down into like um, three tokens um, there is this of uh, string theory just like playing around. but okay so this is like you can see um how it's broken down like each color is a different token and you can see like um any model will have a tokenizer 
um, tokenization is not learned uh, while embedding is so we talked about embedding embedding is where, where you change this token into a vector it's like um, it's actually next step the so next slide but while embeddings are learned because embeddings um, uh, embeddings are like uh, basically um, hold within themselves like the semantic um, meaning basically or the relationship between words um, or tokens these uh, the tokens themselves how you break this down is like it's model is specific it's not learned um sorry so there was a different model here but, um so it's slightly different the breaking down but okay doesn't matter so um you'd see that if but think about we are thinking like oh, what i'm like uh, what i wrote was all in english right and um uh, we we are like going to in this week we're going to think about using amharic right in 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 the model and we know because um the llms are trained basically from of, uh, on data from the internet just collected from the internet mainly but this is also true for like even curated data sets uh, english is dominant everywhere is dominant in in the, in the amount the quantity of the data that is available and it's uh, like the variety of of domains that is available in any other language doesn't come close to english but after english there are languages that are like uh, at least high resource like they are there is enough data uh, data sets curated or not um available for them so there are this big um like spanish um uh, french uh all these other languages german arabic whatever uh but uh, there are also low resource languages um which i think amharic is one of them i'm not sure if arabic actually is one it's not it's actually also a low resource uh language even though if it's well widely spoken um uh so uh, yeah I'm, I'm, not, I'm not just rambling for no reason just i'm saying here the tokenization um uh, and then the embedding the embedding because the embedding is based um they want to say so this you can see that this is what like uh, uh like word by word and it works i will go and go not write to you for you just as an example a text in arabic so and uh, so i will write just my name uh, so my name is imtinam basically and these are just like uh, so these are three words but you can see they are broken down individual into individual um letters uh and this is because of course like uh neither the tokenization nor the, the tokenization for arabic in for open ai is very is generalized is a generic and the embedding is not um not super so that's why it's like even though it can it can handle arabic uh yeah gpt for example can handle arabic but it's not great okay um Okay, so going back to the presentation, I was not loading. So any any question so far? Let me go back.
Okay, good afternoon, everyone. I think we should end the meeting. If you have any questions to Indana, please uh, refer to her on Slack. She is having a really bad condition today. So have a good night. Thank you.